Good morning. It is the 22nd of November, and today we celebrate the feast of the reign of Christ. And so we pray, Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for your love is forever, and you are faithful from age to age. You are our maker, to whom we belong, for you created the earth, and you shepherd all who live in it. When your people were scattered and oppressed, you promised for your prophets to gather them home and to feed them on rich pasture of their own land. In your child, Jesus, the promises have been fulfilled, a shepherd king who seeks the lost and binds up the wounded. When he was killed, you raised him from the dead and seated him at your side in the heavenly places. Now, your immeasurable power is at work in us who believe to clothe us in compassion and righteousness so that we might be fit for the kingdom which you prepared for us from the foundation of the world. And so, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you our prayers this day through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, as together we say, we confess that at times we have failed to love fully, forgive wholly, and to share the joy of your presence all around us day by day. You offer us freedom, but often we settle for the familiar. You challenge us to risk to love, but we opt for safer choices. You offer us hope to move boldly toward the future you intend for us, but we prefer knowing what will happen next. Teach us to abandon our selfish ways and cautious faith so that we can risk offering you our whole lives committed to following Jesus and building your kingdom here on earth. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the collect for the reign of Christ, destitute king, one with the hungry, the naked and the scorned. May our faith be proved not in dogma and piety, but in serving you in the last and the least, through Jesus Christ, the stranger's Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep, and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will, I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost 
and I will bring back the strayed. And I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I would invite you to join me as we say the Jubilate, Psalm 100, by the whole verse. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Call upon his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. And together we pray. God, our Father, you have created us as your people and you sustain us with your hand. Help us always to give you thanks for you alone are worthy of thanksgiving and praise and honor now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me in. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, 
but the righteous into eternal life. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This day in the church year, this feast of the reign of Christ, is the culmination of the entire church year. It is the last Sunday in the liturgical calendar. It is the end of the year for the church. And everything that we have talked about, everything that we have read about in scripture, everything that I have preached about over the past 12 months comes to its fruition, comes to its conclusion today. And this, this feast of the church is an opportunity, it's an invitation for us to look at the world that we live in through the lens of scripture. To look at the world we live in and listen to the prophet Ezekiel, listen to Matthew through the words of his gospel, speak to us today in this place, in our context. And that makes it a very, very important day. Safwat Marzuk, who is uh, a professor of the Hebrew scriptures from uh, Elkhart, Indiana, reminds us that the prophet Ezekiel is an exiled priest in Babylon, a victim of forced migration, a priest who had lost his home, who had lost his country, had lost the religious underpinning of his life, had lost everything which gave him meaning, which gave him hope, which, which gave him purpose. And so Ezekiel speaks his prophetic word to us from a place of trauma, from a place of agony, from a place of suffering. And his predominant theme the message that he wants us to hear is one of the need to deconstruct the dominant institutions of his day and to reconstitute them with justice, which is to say, to reboot it in a way that protected the common good. I want to read to you from the bit which comes before our reading today. Listen to these words. Thus says the Lord God, ah, you shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fatlings, but you do not feed the sheep. You have not strengthened the weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strayed. You have not sought the loss, but with force and hardness, you ruled them out. And so they were scattered because there was no shepherd. Ezekiel is, he is a master of the metaphor without question. And, and the shepherd metaphor which plays such a big part in our reading today, is a metaphor for royalty. The shepherd is a metaphor for kings and rulers. And it is a metaphor for their responsibilities. For in Ezekiel's day, kings and rulers were expected to care for, to protect, to nurture, to feed, to strengthen all those who were in their care. And in our passage today, we are given an image of shepherds who cared for themselves, who fed themselves, who took care of themselves at the expense of the sheep. Kings and rulers 
who got fat and wealthy on the backs of the people they were supposed to protect. For Ezekiel, bad rulers brought about disaster. Self-indulgent shepherds were the reason Ezekiel's people had gone into exile. For him, that is non-negotiable. But there is more. You see, Ezekiel doesn't just criticize, he doesn't just pass judgment on the shepherds, on the kings. Oh no, listen to this. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted all of the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide. I will judge between sheep and sheep. For Ezekiel, as bad as the kings were, they were not the only problem. This passage is also a judgment against the systems that existed within Israel. The priests, the prophets, the judges, the landowners, all who had pushed the weak aside, all who were in the process of ruining God's world. But there is a moment of restoration that Ezekiel wants to proclaim because God is not going to let his world disintegrate. And, and so we hear Yahweh's response and Yahweh's response is, I will. I will rescue them from all the places to which they've been scattered. I will bring them out. I will feed them. I will feed them. They shall lie down in good grazing land. They shall feed in rich passes, uh, pasture. I myself will be the shepherd of the sheep. I will seek the lost. I will bring them back. I will bind the injured. I will strengthen. I, I, I. It seems pretty clear that Yahweh has figured out that if you want something to be done right, you better do it yourself. And, and, and that statement is a statement that restoration is going to happen. And then surprisingly, without skipping a beat, after making this grand statement about what Yahweh was going to do, then Yahweh says, but listen, I'm, I'm going to appoint someone from the line of David who is going to be a prince among you. You see, God's direct rule needed human agency for justice to be established, for the world to be healed. Yahweh needed human agency. Now, it's interesting that this human agent of the Davidic line was going to be a prince, not a king, a prince. God was still going to be in charge, but he needed human agency to make that happen. Now, I think it's pretty clear that Ezekiel was talking about the rebuilding of the temple and the restoration of Jerusalem. He was talking about the immediate future of the people of Israel. But on this feast of the reign of Christ, those who are followers of Jesus, those of us who are Christians believe that Jesus was the mediator of that messianic promise, that Jesus was the one who would seek the lost. Jesus was the one who would heal the sick and bind up the wounds of the broken. Jesus was the one who would be the good shepherd. Jesus was the one who would care for his flock. And Jesus was the one who would give up his life for the sheep. That, that's what this day proclaims. That's what this feast is about. But it is about more than that. This day has to be about more than that. I believe that this day, this day reminds us 
that we need to take a hard, hard look at the world we live in. We need to critique our policies, our leaders. We need to critique our churches and our religious institutions. We need to critique our own hearts. And it is a day that demands honesty. This day calls out to us to look around, to look at our world, and to see it through God's eyes. I, I remember a number of years back, um, the Occupy movement was very active in, in various parts of the world, certainly in the United States and, and in Canada. People who were marginalized, people living with poverty, people who have been pushed to the edges and they wanted to make a statement that they didn't want to take it anymore. And, and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, the response of the public throughout the nation was get them out of here. Get rid of those tents. Get them out of our sight. You see, if we don't see them, then we don't have to deal with the problem. Black Lives Matter. The Black Lives Matter movement over recent months has become a prominent and dominant movement throughout the world. And yet we hear people throwing back their shoulders and saying, all lives matter. Well, yes, yeah, true, but it pretty much misses the point to say that. It pretty much misses the point because this group was talking about the particular oppression and violence that they live with day after day after day. We have seen the rise of BIPOC, uh, black, indigenous, and people of color. And the response has been, like, like the response to Black Lives Matter, we don't wanna see it. We don't wanna see it because if we don't see it, we don't have to deal with it. We don't have to deal with the pain. And, and we look at people who are struggling to find respect, struggling to find acceptance because of their sexuality and, and gender choices. And, and that certainly throws people into a twist. Our world is a conflicted place. And if nothing else, what we need to hear from our readings this day is that God takes the side of the powerless, the lost, the suffering, the sick, and the weak. We need to hear that. And we need to deal with that. In our readings this day, the scriptures call for restorative justice, which is a reset. It's a setting things right for the common good and protecting those who need to be protected. Our scriptures call for the building of a future, which is not simply going to repeat the failures of the past. And we need to hear that and be challenged by that and be moved by that. This feast of the reign of Christ, I believe, also calls us not simply, not simply to listen to scripture, not simply to look out and look at the world around us, but I believe it is an invitation to us, a pleading with us to look in the mirror, to look at ourselves and to listen to listen to what God's Holy Spirit just might be whispering in our hearts this day. So what I'm gonna ask you to do, and, and, and people I think for the last 45 years have been wanting to do this, I'm gonna give you a chance to push the pause button and shut me up, and for that you can say thank you, Jesus. Uh, but I, I do want you to come back. What I'd like you to do if you are alone is to simply think about this for a few moments. And if you are in the company of someone else, I'd like you to chat about this. What might God 
be saying to us today, to me, to you, through the words of the scriptures. What is the Spirit whispering to us? And also, what action, what action might our scriptures be calling us to today? So go ahead and, and push pause, but as my friends in Houston would say, y'all come back now here. Welcome back. We need, we need to listen one more time on this day to the words of Jesus, who I believe sets all of this in its proper context. Listen to the words of Jesus who says, then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you came and visited me. The message of Jesus, consistent through the gospels, is the same as the message of Ezekiel. And we need to hear it and let it shape our lives. God takes the side of the powerless, the lost, the suffering, the sick, and the weak. And as God's people, as followers of Jesus, we need to understand that that responsibility does not simply belong to leaders, does not simply belong to kings and rulers. It is our sacred responsibility. It is our calling to build a future where there is room in the choir for all of God's children. We confess that at times we have failed to love fully, forgive wholly, and to share the joy of your presence all around us day by day. You offer us freedom, but often we settle for the familiar. You challenge us to risk, to love, but we opt for safer choices. You offer us hope to move boldly toward the future you intend for us, but we prefer knowing what will happen next. Oh, dear God, teach us to abandon our selfish ways and cautious faith so that finally we might risk offering you our whole lives, committed to following Jesus and to building your kingdom here on earth. Let all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
Now, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Shema, as together we say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Lord Jesus Christ, you proclaimed God's kingdom among us and within us. In the power of the Spirit, your love is always at work, bringing good out of evil and life out of death. We thank you that your love never lets us go for you have known the good times and the hard times of this life before us. You came as one who was hungry and thirsty. Where people live on the streets today, suffer from hunger or beg for a meal. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be, be done. done. You came as a stranger in need of welcome where people live lonely lives or feel like strangers in a strange land, where love is lacking and people face rejection for the color of their skin or the language they speak, your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done. done. You came as one who was naked, where people lack enough clothing, shelter or life's basic resources, where people live without dignity, exposed to every kind of pain and hardship. Your kingdom come. Your, Your will, will be, be done. done. You came as one who was broken, where people feel pain in body, mind, or spirit, where someone grieves the loss of a beloved or the future they planned, in places where the pandemic has done its worst and desperation has moved in. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be, be done. done. You came as a shepherd, where people are led astray or nations are ruled by corrupt or greedy leaders and there is no peace in the land. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be, be done. done. You came as one who was in prison, where people are treated unfairly, targeted or tortured where justice has failed and people are punished with cruelty. Your kingdom come, your, your will, will be done. done. You came as one proclaiming the kingdom of God. And so we lift up these prayers in your name, Lord Jesus, knowing that your kingdom is drawing near and that we meet you in the face of those who cry out to us. Hasten the day when God will wipe away our tears and death will be no more. Let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Go now and embrace the hope to which God has called us. Recognize Christ in friend and stranger. And as Christ has been gracious to you, so be gracious to those in need. And may God give you a place of rest in risk pasture. And may Christ Jesus be the shepherd king who binds your wounds. And may the Holy Spirit give you wisdom and reveal to you the fullness of the amazing love of the one who holds you in the palm of his hand. Amen.